Hello everyone, my name is Bottletop Hornet, and welcome back to another episode of Minecraft. <laughs> Had to do a slightly different intro today because we are in 1.17 and I can't use the replay mod. So welcome in folks. We're going to start this episode off a little bit differently because I've been a busy boy. And uh, I spent a lot of this week working on getting the spawn set up for our new community server. Now the thing is, as part of that community server... I want to have it so that you guys can access this world and actually have a bit of a wander around exploring the place by yourselves in adventure mode. So to do that, we're going to need a portal. And I'm thinking just behind me over there is a perfect little spot. Because in reality, I'm about to set up a super smelter. I have... Oh, what's this? <laughs> I have myself a potion brewing area over there now, and I have one of these down in the armory. So, wow, that takes a long time to break. <laughs> so what we're going to do is actually turn this whole area into the portal. Huh. Apparently, <laughs> apparently I had some netherite scraps in there. Interesting. <laughs> Hold on, let me clear out my inventory because I've just come back from doing a bunch of resource gathering and uh, I need to put some of that in the barge, but one of them that I can make room for is the sand. So I might just put a couple of the sand ones if I can find them. Oh, there we go. <laughs> the sand ones in there and uh, we'll grab the rest and just put them in the barge itself, so that I can slowly transfer them into the system. Uh, dirt. Dirt can go there. So we'll just fill the barge back up. Definitely need to go out and get even more a little bit later, but for now, I just brought back what I had so that I could get to work on this episode. Because I do know that it's been a little while in between episodes and I've been a little bit slow on the upload schedule because I've started streaming recently. So there's the stream to keep up with and work out how to do. And also, I have been working on this community server. So hopefully once all of that is uh, settled in and everything's working fine, I should be able to get back to a more regular schedule with the filming of, of the Let's Play itself. So let me just put that away and we'll head on over here and turn this into a portal. Now, is water going to flow out of here? Yes, it is. Okay, um, like that. And then we can remove a couple of pieces. That will keep that there. And all we have to do is just do a little bit of work here and this will be the portal. So that way, when you guys are in the server, you should be able to walk through a portal and you'll appear right here into my base and be able to explore it to your heart's content. Ah, oh, it's exciting. I've been working really hard on this and some friends have been helping me out, getting the spawn set up and getting all of the... Uh, the world's organized, so I, I can't wait to show you guys what we've been working on. It's uh, it's pretty exciting. <laughs> but I will release a video once it's ready to uh, show off what's going on and what the plans are with the server. So be on the lookout for that. <laughs> so all I want to do is grab a little bit of materials, being dark oak, see whether I've got any of the stripped stuff. I don't, so we'll just grab this and continue our floor pattern by going like that and like that. Wonderful. And then I can just go like that. And I think that will do. <laughs> uh, we might actually just, yeah, there we go. The portal might not look like much if you don't know what it is. And for me, it's completely useless. But when you are on the server, you will literally be able to walk up to this area and then you will be in spawn. It will teleport you straight into spawn. So hopefully it all works well. <laughs> hopefully the server can handle it, but I'm excited. Okay, all of that stuff sort of sorted and out of the way. We're going to do a little work on getting that super smelter set up. Oh, I didn't want it in the bottom one. I want it in that one, which has all of my workstations. Cool. So if I just grab a couple of materials being, there we go. I already have a decent amount of them. I'll grab some spruce as well. If we head out here. I'll show you what my plan is for this episode, and quite honestly, it's probably going to be a little bit of a, uh, ooh, that's scary, a little bit of a, <laughs> I'm not going to say lackluster because that feels a bit disingenuous, but there isn't going to be as much progress made in this episode as most episodes, just because of the time constraints that I have with all of the other work that I'm doing this week, and hopefully, once we get to the point where the, uh, the replay mod is back out, I can get back to doing big progress and work on mountains and, and all that jazz and show you guys what's happening through that process. 
But for now, what we're going to do is just quickly make ourselves a bit of an area out here because we're going to build the super smelter, like I said in the last episode, up on a bit of a dock, a bit of a boardwalk sort of area. A little bit like what we have going on around the other side of the island, if I fly around there. So this sort of stuff here, I want to continue that idea over on the other side and maybe eventually we can actually link that up over there and uh, make some more walkways going to all the different islands and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that's sort of the plan. So I'm just going to put down a few of these and see whether I can get some uh, pylons put down with the spruce try and avoid getting uh, snuck up on by any creepers or anything like that. And once I have this set up, I'll go grab some furnaces and we'll get to work on setting up our super smelter array and uh, working out how to get it all working together. So I'll get this ready and I'll be back with you in a moment. All right, so I've got myself a basic little setup here with the 26 uh, furnaces that I need, which is exactly how much we've worked out we can get out of the system that I created. You can see that I've set up a couple of uh, pieces up there because eventually when I do this build, I want it to all connect up so that there's a, a walkway slightly coming down here to a, uh, a part of this build and then going down further into that area over there. So that's all for future stuff. And quite honestly, I might actually just uh, wait to do the external part of this until we do get the replay mod up and running, just because I like to show that off and I, I don't want to uh, build it in, in little bits and show it off in just like a couple of cuts. I like you guys being able to see the whole process unfold in front of you. So we'll just work on the mechanics of this today, make sure it's all up and running, hopefully, <laughs> and then we can do the uh, build around it later on, maybe even with some 1.17 uh, materials that would be cool so what i need to work out now is how to get a hopper line for the fuel to go on either side like so now originally what my thinking was hmm, how can i get up there easily <laughs> there we go my thinking was having a piece of blue ice going down the middle and trying to line some uh, items flowing through on either side and shooting down this way now the question is whether I can do that or not. So we might see if we've got enough hoppers to uh, get started, which means getting out the redstone box. We have a couple, but we probably need to make some more. So we'll go get some iron. We should have plenty sitting in our iron farm uh, chest and make up a handful of chests as well. I'm gonna have to go collect some more wood soon. Yes, definitely running low on the wood supply other than acacia, but I don't wanna just use that for uh, for making chests because it's really hard to mine large quantities of that but for now we'll be okay and wonderful <laughs> we've been getting a little supply of iron while we've been away doing other things so that's good i should have a decent supply of chests built up just in storage oh i've used up a lot of them to make shulker boxes that's okay use this dark oak and make a decent supply more and that should get us going so the idea is to hook up the bamboo that we have right tucked down in there at the bottom of the repository and get that flowing in a line up here and then slowly have it completely stock up all of these hoppers and hopefully we can basically have it so that it completely backs up and is full at all times and then that way whenever we go to smelt it uses up a little bit of it and then from there every time we're not actually smelting anything and we're just working around the base that bamboo farm down there even though it's sort of slow is going to go fast enough to fill it back up for the next time we need it so that's the plan but i'm not sure whether i'm going to be able to manage it we'll have to wait and see so if i make up a handful more hoppers like so and we just place them all facing into the back of these furnaces that should be our fuel line there we go that's good and then basically the idea is oh not there <laughs> what i want to do is have a block there and if i put oh i think i think i know what works there there's a way to have items flowing into the hitbox of something else and then continuing on and it ends up halfway on uh, the line between two blocks so if i come over to lighting no it'll probably be in ocean stuff down here yeah there we go we'll grab a couple of these and if i remember correctly Using two of the uh, sea pickles makes a hitbox just large enough that things coming on either side will line up properly. So that means we're going to have to waterlog that area there, probably putting some glass around it for now. So if I just, ooh, I should make a little bit more room above me. 
so that I'm not hitting my head so much. A piece up here. And then if I get myself just a couple of signs, what I can do is actually set it up so that on this side, we have a sign. On that side, we have a sign. And that'll stop the water from flowing out either direction that way. And then from here, all we would have to do is make sure that we have stuff stopping it from flowing out in this direction and only flowing through the middle. So what that would be is like this, we get some half slabs that will stop the water from flowing, but it leaves access to the hopper itself. <laughs> Put that in there accidentally. Leaves access to the hopper itself. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> and allows the items that are flowing halfway on that block to touch the hoppers. I'll just go quickly sleep. Oh, I got stuck. And then if I do the same on this side, like so. And now thanks to having this, uh, this ender chest all sorted out, I can grab some ice, we'll get some blue ice so that it flows nice and far without uh, needing to be sped up again. And with a bit of luck, actually I can make this centerpiece blue ice. And with a bit of luck, we can align everything on there perfectly. Okay. So what I want to do is get a bucket like so, we'll grab a piece of water. And if we sit it here, that's going to flow out that direction. Perfect. But I don't want it to actually flow that far. All I want it to do is flow just far enough that it hits the blue ice and starts to slide. But I don't want it to be collected or moving in the middle. So if I just grab one more of these, probably not put it there actually because that stops any flow. Just put it there above the first line of hoppers. That way it has this little section to move stuff along. We might need to turn these few pieces here into blue ice as well just so that anything coming along this way gets sped up properly so we'll do that and that as blue ice and in theory <laughs> everything that i'm working on now should make it so that when items come into either side of this they hit now i just need to put on the hit boxes hmm. doesn't show the hit boxes for that interesting but with a bit of luck, something coming across here will hit the side of that and hit the side of that and it will line itself up halfway along that line, perfectly in between the blue ice and on top of the hopper. That way it gets sucked up. So all we will have to do now is get ourselves a line of bamboo coming up and as long as we can perfectly split the output, which I think I should be able to do, the output will come down, split, one on either side, bang, bang, and hopefully we get an even amount flowing into either side of this hopper setup. Cool. Okay. <laughs> All we have to do now is we'll just put some hoppers on the end to have an overflow. And this will be our area to store any extra bamboo. And from there, we can get some more hoppers, put them on top of here. And this will be our input lines from our machine that we came up with. So like that. And hopefully I have enough. I think I do. Nice. It's all coming together nice and cleanly. So now we can put a rail over top of this and the rail will go all the way around the outside, turn around a corner here and probably get sped up again on top of here and then come back this side and do the whole thing where it resets inside of here. Nice. <laughs> I hope you guys are following along. I hope this makes sense. I've thought about this a little bit and only now finally getting able to put it together. So I'm gonna see if I can get the bamboo connected up so that it comes across and up into this area over here. And uh, we'll try and get it splitting up. And then if I can get that working, we'll do some tests to see whether it runs across and starts filling. And if it does, we're golden. <laughs> so let me have a crack at getting that working, see whether I can get it nice and flowy and uh, all hooked up. I'll probably have to do some item sorters down in the bottom here. So if we just, Pop down here. As you can see, we have been building up a bit of a supply. So I already have a bunch of bamboo that I might fill the uh, hoppers with so that we uh, already have a full system. And oh yeah, okay. So it wasn't that long ago that I filled that up. And then down here we can have our uh, our kelp section where we have some furnaces made up uh, to turn, or not furnaces, uh, what are they called? Smokers that turn the uh, kelp into dried kelp and we can craft them into blocks. And then the whatever is left over, which is the bamboo, that flows on and up into our system. Cool. <laughs> Give me a second and see if I can work all of this out, get it going, and then we'll uh, we'll test out 
whether it gets into the super smelter. Yeah. Ah, uh, feels good to be finally getting this episode worked on, so I'll be back with you in a minute. <laughs> well, it definitely didn't work out exactly how I intended it to, and I had to go through a couple of different iterations to make this work. But if I fly up into the air a little bit, you can see that we have changed the whole process slightly. And by slightly, I mean completely. <laughs> so what I ended up doing is bringing up the uh, the bamboo from inside down there up through this pipe. And what it does is it falls down into this water line and actually continues around in a full loop. And what we will end up doing is adding a chest on the end there so that once all of these hoppers are full, it flows through. Oh, actually, we'll see it go here. So it goes through the end, slowly rises up in there until it hits the top and goes across. And then somewhere about there is where it is currently filled up to. So I have nearly every single one completely full. And it's just got a couple more to go. And uh, once we get over that direction and it's it's fully filled up, that means that every single one of these is stocked and ready. And as you can see, it does flow through not too uh, slowly. And there we go. It's slowly filling that up. So what I've actually done, because of the way that I had to set up these water supplies is the original input line at the top I covered with these composters to help reduce the lag for the amount of um, hoppers that we have. And then what I did is put these hoppers on the outside into them and down so we can run our rails over the top of here on the outside, go around here, pop through the back, and then the same thing over on this side, pop back down this way and back up into our system. So now we have full bamboo coming in if we pop down into the repository, I'll quickly show you what I have started down here. So as you can see, I have two chests that will be uh, set up properly soon for collecting all of the kelp itself. And uh, I have some leftover kelp here as well, which we can use and turn into some initial blocks, I'd say. I'll take that up with me too. But that flows through across that whole area underneath the ocean and straight up a bubble elevator. Yeah. So now the thing that I have left to do is remake the design that I did in the creative world and uh, set it up so that it is locked in and ready to distribute 26 items uh, per go around. And then once we do that, we should be able to test it and see whether it does deposit one into each and every single furnace. And then uh, we are going to have to pop down a little bit under the water and do some uh, some work to add a line across the bottom here and bring the materials back, but that shouldn't be too hard. We might even be able to put a another rail system that just goes around and around, uh, picking up all of the items. There we go, we can see that's all flowing through. Down that way, it's good, it'll disappear. But yes, all that will be left after we test it is just to make a pickup line that goes to a chest and uh, probably somewhere around the input line as well, and that way the whole system's set up. Cool. <laughs> I know this has taken a while to come out, folks. I've uh, had a lot of work to do and the server is released now. I'm just trying to get this finished and then we can get back to a usual schedule of filming the Minecraft Let's Play on YouTube and whatnot. And I won't have as many other things to deal with. So what I think I'm going to do is just do another cut, make sure I can get all of this set up with the, uh, the input system and all the rails and whatnot. We'll come back in, we'll do a test, make sure it's all working. And then later on, once we get the replay mod working again and we've gone and collected some of the uh, 1.17 blocks, we might do a bit of a build around it in another episode. <laughs> okay, let me build that. Let me go and test it and make sure we have it all set up so that it gets the 26 items that we need and everything is sorted. And we'll pop back in and test it before we finish up the episode. Cool. <laughs> All right. See you in a second. Oh, after a little bit of work, we have something resembling the setup that I had originally, but I've actually changed it slightly and managed to get it so that we could potentially make it a full wall here that all of this is hidden behind, which would be awesome. So I've moved most of the mechanism over to the back side. There's just one last thing that I have realized is sort of limiting the the perfect functionality of this setup and that is this detector rail here hooked up to this comparator is designed to make this piston extend even if that has one piece in it now the thing is it is designed so that it will release it once that has 26 in it but it's not because that has 26 it's because this system counts and it's just a timing thing so in the time that this system takes to 
uh, release this piston that we're looking at now, which is all this stuff here, you get exactly 26 and it goes on its way. But that system would start off and do its thing regardless of how many items are in there. So if that only filled up to 10, this would still count down its time and then that would release and be on its way. So the thing that I want to do, maybe, hold on, I, <laughs> I've sort of been thinking this in my head and I'm not quite sure whether it will work yet. And I, I wanted to bring you guys along for me thinking about it. Now, this will start to receive items out of that hopper whenever it is underneath, unless that hopper happened to be locked. So, <laughs> for example, right now, we'll just do that. If we put some items in there, nothing goes through. So my thinking is, if we can make it so that it will only unlock if the signal inside of it is greater than two, because the signal coming out of this that has 23 items, 23 items makes exactly two. And once it has that signal strength of two, it hits this comparator, and that turns on this line here, extending it with this redstone receiver, uh, extender, no, repeater, <laughs> extends it with that and opens up this piston. So we know that the signal strength from 23 items inside of a hopper is what it takes to hit exactly two. Now it only has to happen for a very short amount of time. So for example, if we grab a this here and we put a redstone comparator here and we'll grab one, two, like so. If I put two repeaters here and put 22 items in there, we should, yeah, okay, so <laughs> we should see with one more item in there, that lights up. Wonderful. So that's a two signal strength. But if there is less than that in there, that is going to stay off. So 22 items. Now, maybe if it needs to be 26 to be able to do a full run on this, maybe we want to set it up for a signal strength of three. So how many items does it take to get out a signal strength of three? We'll use iron for now. So let's try 32. No, let's add 16. 16 made it. Actually, I should be able to do it like this. Let's keep putting these pieces in until we see the signal strength that we require. 41, 42, 43, no, 44, 45, 46. So exactly 46, which is double the 23. <laughs> so 46. I'm sorry, guys, I'm thinking out loud. This is, I feel like I'm actually really improving my redstone compared to at the start of the series, like my understanding of how to set things up. But at the same time, this is still a little interesting. So if we had it, it would mean that we wouldn't be able to smelt the entirety of what we want to put in there. Like there would be leftover probably uh, 46 or just under a stack of, uh, of the items in that hopper, but if we allowed it to only unlock and uh, and let all of this stuff go and put items in that chest, when there is 40, hmm, the question here, <laughs> sorry guys, uh, not that smart, but I'm trying to work it out. So, okay, how about this? If we have, <laughs> let's make some room and grab a little bit more redstone. Okay, so at 46 items, we have a power of three, but at 45, we don't. So with 45 in there, we want this block, uh, or this piston here to be locked. So if I chuck a block here and make a redstone torch like so, that should be locked. Now to check that, all we would have to do is put a container of sorts underneath here, like a uh, another one of these. It is not locked. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Very interesting. What about if we grabbed a block like this? Let's try that again. Let's put items in there. No, that also goes. Hmm. I'm running off the assumption of how a item sorter works, where if there is power uh, on this torch, it is going to lock the, uh, the output of the hopper. So what do we need to do to make that a reality? Is a powered block directly touching it going to make that happen? No. <laughs> In fact, that somehow going faster than a standard speed. Very interesting. The next trick is to maybe try it like we would this here. So much like we do with a, a, uh, a sorting system, we have it so that it doesn't unlock the hopper until it has filled up to, what is it? 41 plus 
Yeah, 45, which is the number that we worked out. So it's the same principle where it unlocks the uh, the hopper and allows items through once it is hit a signal strength of three. So we could just make the exact same system, but that would mean that every single time it would fill up, say, the 41 uh, in here, and then that would become an item filter and it wouldn't allow anything else through. The question is, is there a way? Hmm, it's difficult. And I don't actually know whether it's possible. <laughs> I might be trying to do something that's not possible. But I would like it to be that it will allow any item through once it has over 45. Oh, 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 oh. What about... Okay, let's try this. What about... <laughs> we set it up actually like an item filter. So let's place that in there. Let's get our stuff... And we'll do the item filter design. So we get a repeater in here, one of those there, and then something like that. I think that's how it works. Now it's like this, perhaps. <laughs> oh no, I've forgotten how to make an item filter. I think that's correct. Then if I get some redstone and put it one, oh, floating, one, two, and three, then all we need is that repeater coming out of here like so. And wonderful. I think that's correct. So if I put a hopper into there, and then say I put a hopper under there. Technically, until we put, yes, yeah, see, this is better. Right now, no items are going through into there. Now, if that was, say, our, uh, our input hopper here, okay, I don't know whether you guys are following, but I think I'm starting to work it out. Now, if this will only release once there are 45 items in the top of there, so if we went, uh, if we got it so that we had 45, or that is not released. As soon as we put one more, oh no, okay, that's still locked. And then as soon as it goes over, yes, one over 45 allows an item through. Now, the question is, if we put in, say something that we name sorters, oh, I should go to sleep. I've spent the whole Minecraft day trying to work this out. That ah, <laughs> I nearly fell. Okay, I think I'm coming up with an idea. If we rename something, 45 somethings to be exact, as a sorter, and then we use that in that setup so that if there is, uh, mm, is it gonna work? I don't know. Okay, give me a second. Let me, uh, let me rename some stuff or see whether I have some stuff renamed. Uh, we'll just take iron nuggets for now because we won't be using that, but Let's try it. Give me a moment and I'll do some experimenting and see whether I'm talking <laughs> talking sense or whether or not it's just, uh, it's never going to work. Okay, I'll be right back. Let's see. <laughs> and I actually ended up coming over into my redstone testing world and discovered something. I finally got the idea working. So, as you can see, 26. 26 was the number that we wanted for uh, how much to go through into that hopper and therefore into the uh, the chest itself. So, uh, for example, <laughs> if I was to put a thing down there and we'll get oh, one of these. Now, if we had 26 items in there, Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> For a second, I got really worried, but this makes sense. So what we actually want to do is bring this up one higher. So let's do this like so and think like this. Okay, so right now, this hopper should technically be locked. And if we were to put, wait for it. <laughs> If we were to put this line underneath here, nothing would technically go in. So, hold on, let me get the 26. Nothing is going in through that, correct? Hmm. Oh, dear. It was working so well just a moment ago. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Let's think about this. <laughs> Let's go back to the way that I had it. Oh, I was so convinced that <laughs> it was ready to go. No. Okay. Uh, we want that there and that there and that there. And we technically want it to lock this hopper here. I <laughs> will change the time today. So there we go. I have it set up so that this input hopper must reach 26 items in that position. 
So if I take this out, put 25 in there, it's not powering this line at all, and therefore this hopper is locked. When we put in one more, it should activate that line just long enough. As you can see in the top right here, it's going, that should turn off, and this will stop at exactly 26 items. Yes, wonderful. So now we just have to work out a way to get that into our hopper minecart. Because what we can have is, say, some sorting items here that equal up to the 20. So we could have uh, something like that, for, for example. So that only one type of item can go through at a time. And we could go the white concrete or whatever it was that we were wanting to make from our, our chest would go up to here. And it would not go into the hopper that loads until it had 26 items. So... What our problem was with the one in the Let's Play world is that this output here, if I use this, you can see that it, oh, there's stuff in there. Damn it, hold on. <laughs> let's, let's get rid of that. Okay, so for example, wait for that, that's all good. Put that there, when this comes down, it's, since it's empty, it's not putting an output. And we only want that to put an output when it gets 26 items. But in the Let's Play world, if there was a couple of items in here, it's still going to put an output. We don't want any items to flow in here until it's going to output 26 items exactly. So what we need to do is probably take that and instead put it into a block on the side. Let's try this. Let's imagine that this is our setup now. So that's the one that has our rail going underneath it. We can put all of this above everything and there is nothing in that minecart and we have 25 pieces of concrete. With a bit of luck, when we put one more piece of concrete into this system, it'll open up the hoppers just long enough for 26 items to travel through and we'll have to see whether the having an intermediate hopper changes that. But let, let's just do a test. One piece, that should open that up Passing the items through here, into here, and with a bit of luck, cross your fingers, folks. Come on. Come on. Ah, one off. Okay, so it's going to... Hmm, let's then add a single extra piece, so 27. Let's try that. So we'll take the pieces of concrete out of there, put the 25 in here, and make sure that one's removed as well. And then that should go for one tick extra, one uh, hopper tick extra, allowing the 26 items to come through. But that means that it might put a single piece of this in there. It does. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. That middle hopper makes it difficult. Hmm. <laughs> I was so sure I had it, folks. I was so sure. That seems to be the right idea. Getting all of that worked out so that we have, well... 26 items and then we would pass 26 items through leaving behind exactly the amount uh and stopping that whole system and it would only fire off again and start passing items through once that made its way up to another 26 items so if the items that you were trying to filter and and use were passing through but you were at the end of what you had left over and say you only got up to 21 it wouldn't continue the system with only 21 pieces in it, therefore not filling every single one of our, our furnaces. So what do I need to do to make it so that we can unload the amount that is in here exactly when it hits 26 and get 26 into our minecart chest as well? Mm, some more thinking. How about this? If I work it out, I'll get it done in the Let's Play world because I know we're starting to uh, go a little bit long on this episode. And then if it's all working, I'll let you know. If it doesn't work, we're just going to have to give up and try something else. <laughs> so hopefully when you see me in just a second, I'll have worked it out. Cross your fingers. Oh, okay. And three, two, one. Oh, guys. I think I've done it. I really had to go through many, many different iterations and eventually arrive at a far more simple solution, but I think I've got it. Let me explain what I have worked out over here. There we have our, uh, our chest minecart sitting on top of that block. Now what I have made it do is in here I have 20 items. If I wanted to smelt, say, netherrack, for example, this would not release 
the uh, the minecart down onto the system again, unless there was at least wait for it. So twenty five equals forty five. If I put one more in here, it would release that from the system, come down and activate the one that we have down here, and therefore it would remove exactly 26, because that's what the timing is set up for on this, before allowing it on, and nothing would, nothing further would come out, and then nothing further would come out, so we would leave all of these smelter ingots in there, and it would fill back up from the chest until it reached the, uh, the level 3 output again to open that up. Now, if the chest is full, that means that it's going to continue to pour in and this can continue to go around and around and around. And every time it drops down here, it slows down, picks up 26 items and leaves again over and over and over. The thing is, we wanted it to stop at 25 or under because if there's not a full amount of the smelters worth left, we don't want it to pick up some and use some of the smelters and not some of the others. So if that's the case... Being under level three power going through the uh, <laughs> going through that comparator there means that this is going to stay opened, won't allow that through until we get one more in there. So if we have say a trapdoor or something, for example, over top of this as uh, as part of the decoration and access to that chest. We can open that up. If we if we want to grab the remaining pieces, we can grab those out and clear the system if there's nothing left in here and uh, save that for later, I suppose. So it does mean that if we want to smelt stuff, we're always going to have at least or up to 25 items remaining. Unless, of course, there is exactly 26 left over and then we would have nothing once it was all removed. But if there is an odd number and it doesn't quite eat it, uh, and it doesn't quite equal up to a, a multiple of 26, we're going to have a couple left over. But with that being said, what I think I will do is a test, and we have exactly 64 here, so a full stack. All of these, uh, these furnaces out here are fueled. Some of them have got a little bit less at the end, but you can see it is starting to fill back up, and uh, we might have to make a little bit more of an efficient bamboo farm, but that's for another day. It has enough fuel in it out there, Technically, this should go around twice. Hold on. If we split that into three and go like this, it should go around two times, perfectly smelting two items in every single one of the furnaces, and we should be left over with 12 netherrack in that spot. If that works, that means that no matter what, every time we put items in this... We make sure that that is clear first so that we don't have uh, the chest unable to run items through. So we make sure that's clear. We have items run through. And when the items run out and get less than a full run, they will pause. That will no longer come through. And we have a functioning, programmed, perfectly optimized and spread out for the exact amount of fuel used in every single one per trip smelter system <laughs> oh my goodness okay i'm gonna sleep and we want to do a test because i have uh, spent a lot of time in my redstone world trying to come up with a design i really didn't want to look at any tutorials because i the idea of being able to learn it myself and it might not be the best way to do it but i have had an idea in my head that will now become a reality. So let's chuck a full stack of netherrack in here. We should end up with 12 remaining in there once it's done its full trip and two pieces of the nether brick in every single smelter. Oh, cross your fingers. <laughs> if you've made it this far, please just cross your fingers. Okay, that will fill up until it hits 26 and it will release that. Okay. Come on, release the system very shortly. Oh, I've done something wrong. Oh God. Okay, let's uh, let's troubleshoot. Let's wait for all of that to come out. <laughs> let's troubleshoot. Grab the full thing. Okay. What have I not hooked up? It's possibly this. Power on that is zero and zero and one. Very interesting. How about instead we have uh, some. <laughs> Troubleshooting. Redstone come out there, and instead of that being there, maybe it's that that was my problem. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, it's all right. It's all right. That will be on its way, and uh, we can set this up in the meantime. So we'll grab that redstone repeater nice and quick. We'll put that there. 
then what we want to do is uh, uh, put a block here, <laughs> the redstone torch into there, a piece of redstone here, and a piece of redstone here. Okay, that catches that. We grab the 20 out of that because it won't go into the smelter. Okay, let that come back this way. <laughs> let me take that F3 off. Mm. And I think that also might have failed. So if we do that, we want exactly a two power out. That's also a problem that I had. <laughs> One, two. Okay, okay. That's back to 23. We'll take this off here. Make a new one. Run, 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 run back up to the top. Put that in here. Okay, okay. <laughs> take two. Put in the 20 pieces of that. And okay. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Once that hits 26, it should release that. It does. Why is there only 28 in that? Oh, because it's doing that. That should hit 26 and continue on. It hit 25. Why? Why? Okay, there must be a delay required on that, I think. Wait, why is that now fully powered always? Hmm. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, we'll be right back. Ah. <laughs> uh. Okay, it's very quick for you guys, but I've spent so much time fiddling with this, trying to make sure everything is worked out. But look at that. That's two, uh, 12 netherrack in there. And if we go across to here, there should be two nether bricks in every single one. Now, we don't have to check all of them, but if we come to this end one as well, yes, perfect. Two nether bricks in that. I will go sleep again. <laughs> I've spent many, many, many hours on this. And like I said before, I could have looked up tutorials, but this is, I feel like this is a unique design that is probably my own. Uh, I don't know whether there's anything particularly the same out there. And so the fact that I'm spending the time to teach myself, to learn myself is really, really cool. <laughs> I just hope you guys have uh, stuck along for the ride. So with a bit of luck, if I put in a single stack, this should work. So that will fill up until it hits 26. Then it will release this over here. So in just a second, wonderful. Then this should fill up to 26 exactly. And then that one on the side will release. Wonderful. That is now continuing to fill up. So that's fine. That means that this is now open, ready to go because the system has enough in it. That means that when this comes back, it should be empty, start filling up, and this should collect 26 and go on its merry way. Yes, and 12 remaining. Ah. <laughs> Look at that. So now we have 12. This is closed because that is under the threshold for how much is required. And that sits there and waits, and we should have four in every single one of these. Four. And if we go to the other end where it would have finished up. Yes. <laughs> amazing. Absolutely amazing. Oh, I'm so excited. Wonderful. So what we might do is we've got a couple of... Ooh. So how much is this? If we divide this into groups of 26. <laughs> let's see. Okay. So if we put all of the remaining netherrack, hold on, in there with... A bit of luck, if the system works, we should end up with 16 netherrack remaining in this section right here. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going to put both of these in and see whether it works. And I'll just speed up the footage. And if it does, I'm a genius. I, I, there's no other way to put it. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, all right, let's go. I'm going to speed this up while looking at this section here. And we should end up with 16. The moment of truth, folks. Moment of truth. Oh my goodness, it worked. <laughs> that means that that is completely shut off. And if we come over here, this should be depositing its last one. Oops. And once that's burnt up, we will have eight nether bricks in there, and it should be eight in every single one now. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys don't understand how long I spent testing this and trying to get it to work. All in the hopes of getting this out for you guys amongst doing other things during the weeks of learning streaming and setting up our our uh, community server. But look at it. It works. I have a system set up. I ha it's obviously a bit messy right now, but we can definitely clean this up with a nice design when we build the, uh, the structure around the super smelter itself. And we also need to have a way to remove the items out of it and probably bring it back over here to an unloading station. So with that being said, folks, I think I'm going to end the episode here. I have made you guys wait long enough for this episode and I want to get back into a normal schedule nice and quick. So I would like to thank my Patreon supporters, especially my level three supporters, Tom and Master Shifu. Thank you guys so much. You guys are truly the reason why we managed to get the community server up. So if anyone's watching this who has been playing on the community server, I hope you've been enjoying it. And uh, if you haven't already heard about that, join us in the Discord. You can uh, find the link to that in the description and ask the people there. There is a whitelist section where you can put your name down and give us some time. We usually allow about 24 hours before we put people on the whitelist. So yes, thank you to those Patreon supporters. Thank you to the people supporting me on Twitch and uh, TikTok and everywhere. You guys are amazing. I promise I'm back to YouTube now. We're going to start putting out some episodes a lot more frequently. And yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Leave a like if you did. And um, until the next one, I hope you take care of yourselves. And I'll see you then. <laughs> oh boy, what an effort. <laughs> bye bye, guys. Take care. Whoop. <laughs>